Welcome to the Retire Right Podcast with Larry Heller. You deserve complete financial advice. There's no acceptable alternative if you want a plan to live well and on your terms. Complete financial advice equals complete peace of mind. Now, let's get into this week's podcast episode. Hello and welcome to Retire Right with Larry Heller from Heller Wealth Management. I'm really excited. Today is the 80th podcast that Larry has done in in podcasting years. That's like, well, it's an old dog with a lot of new tricks, Larry. (laughs) I I, I know that I can age me that. (laughs) Don't age me that much, Aaron. (laughs) But I I love the fact that today we're actually going to be taking a step back. And, And the reason being is that you have a lot of listeners now. You have a lot of people that are inquiring about what you do and how you do it. Um, it's always good to have that refresher. And today we're going to be talking about what people can expect when they engage you and your team in this initial conversation to talk about the things that they're learning on this podcast, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we've covered a lot of technical and a lot of educational materials and we've been, we're, we're asked, you know, what can we expect with working with you? So, Mm -hmm. and we have usually have a separate meeting with that. So I thought, great idea. Let's do a podcast. And now I can be able to share that with people that are interested in our services. All right. That sounds great. So before we even dive into, um, you know, what it looks like when they call in or when they email in from those first steps, why don't you kind of explain and give an overview of what you do with, you know, clients and what your goal is? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the word financial advisor, wealth manager, there's so many different areas and so many different people that call themselves financial planners, advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, And a lot of people think, well, it's just people that manage money. And that's really not, not what we do and not the the people that we can really help. And that's what we want, want people that we really can help them live the, and get to the point where they live their lives with confidence. Let us worry about everything financial so you can enjoy your life and mm-hmm. make sure that you have somebody behind there either. Uh, sometimes I say it's our you know, chief financial officer, uh, but what we do is just, like I said, so much more than, than, inv- than investors, mm-hmm. than investments. We're really looking with from the pre-retirement stage to their retirement transition all the way through after retirement. And the traditional retirement sometimes is is gone these days. Is yeah. People are, are not completely stopping working. or the, So what people need to know to live their lives with confidence, because a lot of times people don't know people don't know what they don't know until after right. they've gone through the whole process with us. And they say, wow, I didn't even think about that. Or uh, wh- that's so important. How come we never thought about that before? Or, or adv- our advisor never really brought that up. So that's kind of what we do. And those are the people that we're working with. We've actually turned down people who said, well, we just want you to in- manage a um, million dollars for us. And, uh, and unless they go through the process and they're really committed to to really getting to their point where they can, um, we can solve problems and help them get where they want. Those are the relationships that we're working for, and those are the people that we can help. Yeah, I, I again, I kind of like it. We, we've said this before on the podcast. It's kind of like surgery, right? You can't walk into your doctor and say, you know, I'm kind of tired of this appendix. Could, just, could you just cut this thing out? Well, no. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> what's going on in your life. Let's talk about your health and the fact that you, you know, you came in here with a six pack of donuts in, under each arm. Uh, that's my personal story there, Larry. But, uh, you know, the, the, the doctor wants to know more uh, and is going to ask you the questions to draw out the answers to help them do what they need to do. And you've spoken about it on this podcast so many times that this is exactly what you do. You get into these conversations with your clients uh, so that you can know more about their hopes, goals, dreams, their, their what they want to accomplish. Because without that information, there's no way that you could possibly help them uh, to, to get from point A to point B without it being you know a, a terribly rocky road. So that being said, somebody's listening to this podcast, they're going to call you up or they're going to email in. What does it look like from day one? If, if I'm, I'm brand new to this, I'm calling you guys up, what happens first? Well, uh, our first meetings and our first go around, like you said, is really find out what is important to you. And so the first question that I ask is paint me a picture of your life five years down the road, 10 Mm. years down the road. 
And sometimes I actually get the, I get to see the wheel spinning in their head because no financial advisors really ask them that question to start visualizing that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of different things start to start to come out. I'm really talking about, you know, visualizing your second act. Uh, what is the life going to be at that particular time? And, you know, some of the examples people sometimes say, well, I want to stop working and just maintain my lifestyle, or I see myself um, starting a, a new career in a different passion that I have part time, or I want to buy a second home, or, you know, I want to travel, 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 that's a, a, a big one. Or others are like, you know, I, I really want to start a childhood foundation and give back, or or help my all my grandkids through college because I've been lucky enough to to be able to do that or make mm -hmm. sure my special needs child is taken care of and then on and on and on and then when we start to figure out what each one of these financial goals are what their ultimate um, life is going to be in different phases well, then it makes it a lot easier to create a financial plan and create an investment strategy and so this is so critical um, sometimes I don't even know I wouldn't even know how to go about uh, it, it putting in together an investment strategy without going through this discovery mm -hmm. process so it, it's so critical and it, it's really um, eye-opening for a lot of clients to go through this process and some people don't know or they say well possibly this possibly this and we do have projections and then we're always talking about this going forward because things change and what you what is important to you now now changes i we originally had a client and he was working and he was thinking about retiring somewhere down the road and one day he just said you know what larry this is not for me not for me any anymore and the matter of nine months they he he, re, he stopped working he sold his house in long island bought a place in florida and three months after that he realized you know i'm a little too far from my family so we figured out how to buy a small cottage in Connecticut near yeah. his family. So th those were the important things and those are the things that he basically said he, he, he wanted to accomplish and we figured out a strategy and changed it and worked that and that's, and, and now he's living, he's basically told me last week, I just spoke to him, he says, life couldn't be better. Uh, and he's so happy he made this move now rather than waiting for five years. And even in a you know pandemic, he's he's figured out a way to make him happy. And that's when I hear those stories and the, the see that actually come into place. That's solely rewarding for us. Yeah, I bet absolutely. And you you've had clients that you've had for many 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 years, and you you've been able to walk beside them in this process and, and see all the changes you know in their kids, and now they've got grandkids and and so on and so forth. I think that that would be incredibly rewarding. So after that discovery, what's that? Yeah, just next one step? thing now is that you just mentioned that now is that rewarding. It's kind of pretty cool. Now we have three, we have some three generation clients. Oh, so that's, oh, that's oh, actually, that's, that's actually pretty, pr pretty cool. Um, so I'll jump into the next step. So once we've kind of figured out the, the big picture, now we want to start to really look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the first thing is really to, to create a cash flow analysis. And sometimes this is easy, and sometimes people have a little bit more difficult in this uh, because a lot of people don't have budgets or don't have expenses. And we do need to get some numbers and get some accurate numbers because a minor difference in expenses could have a, a different outcome, whether they're successful or able to accomplish things than that. Now, we do have a couple of tricks of the trade so you don't really have to go through every check that you write and trying to determine that we can go through that but we really want to get a game plan we want to get a projection a really a year by year projection of what your income is going to be from pensions and social security and what mm -hmm. your expenses are going to be uh and we, we kind of look at it sometimes in three phases in retirement expenses uh, people don't realize that 
non-pandemic, they they tend to spend more money the first 10 years of, of not working because they have a lot more time. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of evens out. And then then expenses pick up for, you know, health care in the, the, the third part of that. So really trying to see what the numbers are is, is really the, the next step. So we'll we'll ask for all this information uh, and and get all this information uh, and, and then cre and then create a cash flow that we can then go through it together and show them, OK, what is, this is going to be. Believe it or not, more you would think more people that came to us and we did this because the next part is really looking at the retirement plan after the cash flow mm -hmm. and mo mo more people than not are better off than they think they are going to be once we put this put this down so which we find interesting but we've got to go ahead and, and, and create this financial plan and then the retirement plan and we do this interactively so um, whether it's at our office or now when we're doing Zoom, we have all the software and all the analysis right online that we're both looking to it. And if they say, you know what, uh, it's working well here, what happens if I move my timeline up and I want to kind of stop working earlier? Or what happens if I want to add another $10,000 a month to my expenses? And uh, the good thing is we can do this. When I first started, that would be a week before I can get them an answer mm -hmm. and going through that. Now we can do that. We can do that live. So we're we're interacting and, and doing all that. And what we part of this financial plan of retirement is we are coordinating with a lot of different other areas, um, their risk tolerance. Um, their uh, taxes, Social Security, various investment returns and inflation projections. I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that's all included when we're looking at this, in, in, this game plan. And then we're constantly updating this um, and, and monitoring it and changing this when we have our meetings. So uh, it's not a one-time, okay, this is going to work and that's it. It's continu continuously doing this and seeing that they're on track and they're continuously on track. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that you've spoken before about not necessarily behavioral finance, but people's behavior when it comes to finance. And anybody who is retiring, um, I, I think they do need to realize that that time on their hands that you were mentioning earlier, that's a that can play a big huge factor. So I'm curious how many how many clients have you had to help pivot when they realize they're spending too much money, you know, right off the bat because now I'm playing golf every day instead of twice a week. Well, golf's kind of expensive, or I'm going out to eat three or four times a week instead of the once a week that I used to. I mean, that, that's got to be a big adjustment. Well, yes, but if we're working with them, most times we're working with them pre-retirement, mm -hmm. so we build that into their retirement. Yeah. So we may show them, okay, here's what you're telling us, but here's an extra like like I said, five thousand dollars a month for the first five years after retirement. A lot of that is is built in. It's not just golf, but it, it the big number is usually the travel part. Oh, true, yeah. Uh, but it is, but it is eating out more and doing that. So we'll already build that in, and that'll be an alternative projection that we're showing to them. Perfect, perfect. All right. So, what is the next step once you've kind of established that? So the next step now again th this is this doesn't always happen they're not all happening in one particular meeting this is over time mm -hmm. and the first year we could have five six seven meetings on all different time frame but so after we've done the first two meetings now the third one is okay now is the investment strategy meeting how do we now modify, change their investment strategy to make sure that everything that they've talked about in the discovery and the retirement plan meetings can happen. And here's where we've we've asked and we've done these in-depth risk tolerance questionnaire. We've been using this for 25 years. It's a it's a little bit more in in-depth questionnaire. Um, and it, it actually helps to really determine what you're comfortable with. And when we've had these big downturns, that they've worked because people have stayed the course. Um, and then we'll talk a lot about asset allocation. Um, again, a lot of these topics we're talking about, they're all separate podcasts on them, mm -hmm. but how important that asset allocation is because 90% of your success is made up of asset allocation, not the specific 
fund or bond or stock that you're going to actually actually point. So we'll go through the asset allocation and we'll show them uh, evidence-based returns based upon history, based upon all this asset allocation, based upon how it works together to get them where they need where they need to be. And the asset allocation will change whether you're a pre-retired, closing retirement, or in retirement. How much do you have in cash to meet your short-term needs and your medium-term needs? And we'll spend a lot of time with that. And then from there, we'll coordinate and, and go through a specific investment portfolio using low-cost funds and individual bonds to get them to where they need to where they need to be and to create something that's going to be able to be successful uh, and we are looking at different portfolios whether it's your taxable portfolio or your tax-free portfolio how does taxes come into the investment portfolio because it's not what you earn it's what you keep so uh, you know being in a you know a former CPA we're very cognizant of that taxes and how that how that impacts and like I said the fees and the cost of each of the, the funds and uh, of course we'll also point out that we're a fiduciary and that, that that's a big difference than you know brokerage firms that we do have have to do what's in your best interest uh -huh. and we are completely independent so so a whole meeting of putting an investment strategy together uh, that's going to be successful and, and meet all your needs is really our, our, our third step our third our third meeting yeah absolutely and, and again I just want to highlight the word fiduciary you've spoken about that on previous podcasts and for anybody who doesn't know, please look that up because you'll understand more in depth what that truly means to Larry and his team and to the work he does because that's that's vitally important for any advisor that you're looking at. They need to be a fiduciary. That's my opinion, of course, but I think that most people would echo and agree with me when they understand that. All right, so beyond that meeting, what, what else do you cover? All right, so you know, we, we cover tax planning. So you know, a lot of times, you know, everybody has, just about everybody has an accountant, but most accounts are kind of reactive, not proactive, and mm -hmm. looking at creative ways of different strategies to, to save money. And, and that is so crucial. And, and what do I mean by, by that? And I'm not just talking about specific tax planning ideas an account may cover. I'm talking about like a withdrawal strategy. Do when I stop working, do I take all my money out of my taxable accounts first or because I don't have to take money out of my retirement accounts at age 72? Is that the best way or should I be taking a little bit out of my retirement accounts earlier? Um, possibly. Should I do a Roth conversion? I mean, Roth conversions right now are so huge for so many reasons. If mm -hmm. you missed my last podcast on inherited IRAs and talking about Roth conversions, I would strongly urge you to listen to that. But converting money into a Roth conversion could possibly save you a lot of taxes and definitely your, your kids a lot of taxes. So security, we're going to talk about that. That's actually a whole separate meeting. But when you take your Social Security, it could also impact what tax bracket you are, which is coordinated with your withdrawal strategy, which is coordinated with potential Roth conversions. So it, it, it's, it's, re it's really interesting on, on what, what we could do and some of the strategies. We're working with a, a, a recently divorced client, and she's still working, and she also has a, a lot of um, money in retirement accounts. And we're talking about doing a solo 401k now while she's working to protect her assets and then possibly doing a Roth conversion. Uh, so some of those large IRAs may be turned into um, tax-free money later in life. So all those strategies in the tax planning, and that's just some of them, uh, charitable, some of the charitable planning we do and possibly withdrawing money from your IRA instead of making regular contributions. So that, that that's, a, again, a whole nother planning topic and a whole nother planning meeting. Yeah, and, and I hope that people listening are getting the theme that this is everything that, Larry, that you're doing is individualized, every bit of it. Absolutely. This is all coordinated, working with our team, uh, Greg and Belinda, and our staff, and our CFPs on staff. Yes, this is all personalized to, to you specifically. Yeah, I think it would, it would absolutely have to be to be effective. All right, so what's the, the next meeting or something else that you cover? Yeah, no, another we cover, and again, this may not be right up front when the pre 
you know, pre-retirees, but as you get closer to needing Social Security, when to take it? Um, and there's oh, there's so many factors. I again, I just did, we just did a webinar, so uh, if, if you're interested, you can someone can shoot me out an email. I'll gladly send a webinar on all the different reasons and all the different Social Security um type of strategies you can keep in place and and there's a lot of different ones whether you're married divorced widowed so that's kind of a a, a side analysis to see on, on what the social security um, strategy is going to be but it's a big one because if you make the wrong mistake one it could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars but also you could put your spouse in a in the wrong position if you were to uh, die earlier so uh, than the normal. So uh, Social Security, figuring that out, very important. You, you've spoken about this before, and it's there's so many different ways to take it. There's so many different times that you can take it, and, and it affects everything. Like you said before, I was listening to you when you said, you know, it ties into a Roth conversion. It ties into when you should take Social Security. It ties into your overall taxes that you're going to pay or not pay. It's so intertwined that it it takes somebody that does this full time like you, <laughs> you know, to, to untangle all this stuff that, I mean, it's just crazy how it all, all of each one affects the other. Absolutely. Sometimes I tell people it's like a big puzzle and we have all the pieces mm -hmm. and we have to see how the pieces are going to entwine. And when they pieces come together and we're able to have the puzzle it, you get a clear picture and you say, wow, it's all working together. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I, we, we do coordinate with your other advisors on this and your accountant on this and, and get them involved on the tax side. And we'll talk a little bit about the, the, the next step. But you're right. It is it is a big puzzle to to solve. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I love doing. Yeah, absolutely. So what is that next step? So the next step is really the the estate tax meeting. And again, you may have an estate attorney who have drawn up your wills. Uh, I can't tell how many times where someone says, oh, it's, oh, that's all taken care of. My attorney did this all and drafted all this and it was great. And we actually had one client who was so adamant. He's, oh, I got all these trusts and all these great all these great things in my wills. And he really gave us a hard time. He said, no, you don't really have to review this. And, and we said, oh, well, let, let's just take it because we want to put it in our client portal that we do for all of our clients. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look at it. And we took a look at it and we had a meeting and I said, this is great. And, uh, <clears throat> and the only problem is, Nothing's going to go into this because all of his assets were titled improperly. Oh no! And they weren't they weren't rechanged to put in the right way to make this work because a lot of attorneys will draft the documents, but they don't do the follow up to make sure that the assets are titled right, um, or will actually find out well what the beneficiaries are and the clients will say to us well he, these are our beneficiaries and these are our contingent beneficiaries we're like no 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 we need to see them in writing and we've actually seen you're going to get a kick out of this actually an ex-spouse is a beneficiary <laughs> on an account oh no um, <laughs> so yes or minor children uh, there and i'm like well Yikes. if god forbid something happens to you and your spouse uh, a one-year-old is going to know what to do with a million dollars. So uh, don't you want to be governed by your will? So the, the a minor beneficiary needs to have certain wording to make it possibly that it be governed by the will. It's not automatically going to be governed by the will because it's an IRA account. So knowing all those and talking about some of these inherited strategies going forward, if you, if you haven't even realized that and know what your tax liability is going to be, and that varies from state to state. In New York State, if you miss by a few dollars, that you can have a huge New York State tax now some attorneys are great some attorneys um uh, you know don't even don't even know there's something called the santa clause uh which can i'm not going to go into that but there's a santa clause in in your wills that could really save you millions of dollars if it's done right so uh so mm. just going through those documents of course we're not attorneys but just going through that and talking to them about what their goals are yeah. and what they want to have done and how they want money to, to be transferred to possibly minor children so that's a whole nother scenario that we'll start with and then we'll get attorneys involved whether it's their attorney or one of the ones that we can recommend 
Well, I think that's one of the most valuable things you do when it comes to other professionals in your clients' lives is just putting a second set of eyes on things. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, I don't know how many times when I've been working and doing different things, I would just like somebody else just to take a look, just to make sure everything is is as it is supposed to be. And so for you to do that and work, you know, and play well with others in the sandbox, as it were, uh, with those other professionals, that is, I think, one of the most valuable things that you bring to the table. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, we do. And we do, we do have a strong lineup of different professionals mm -hmm. that we refer to and work together with. And that's all for the clients. If all your professionals are working together hand by hand, that, that only makes it more successful for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. What else do we need to know about this process, Larry? So the last process really is an, uh, another important one. I want to call it an asset protection. You know, you know what happens if, if you have a you die, and we're mm -hmm. all going to die. But what happens if you die earlier than you planned? What happens if you get disabled? What about long term illness, which is a huge factor, and what to do about that? And also, you know, from a liability standpoint, do you have the right coverage? Do you have the health coverage? Do you have the right umbrella policy? You know, I, I can't tell you how many times we ask people for their umbrella policies and they're, they're so underinsured. Again, the odds of some, sometimes some of these things happening are, are low, but they do happen. People mm -hmm. do get sued. People do have accidents. People do fall on your property. People do get into car accidents. And you don't want to find out that you weren't protected after something happens or after after there is a after there's a fire so you want to know beforehand what your what it, your coverage is and again we have professionals that we work with and we refer out that are willing to even give our second opinions to our clients just to make sure that they're, they're right there. Um, and there's a lot of different strategies, especially with the, the long-term care and the asset protection. We have clients that self-insure. We have other clients that, that it makes sense to buy a long-term care policy. Uh, it's not right for everybody, but making sure that, that's, that, that the asset protection is all, all, all taken care of. So there may be six, seven different types of areas that we're going to cover over the cost of the, uh, the cost of the first year, and that's when a lot of changes may happen. But we're on a continuing basis. We're reviewing them, and we're updating them, and we're having meetings on this. And you know, sometimes sometimes we don't have to cover all seven in the in the cost of every year, but but we do constantly look at these and review and revise them and update them as your uh, as things with you change, as the mm -hmm. tax law changes, as the world changes, uh, having somebody there to be by your side to eventually live the life you want to live is what we is what we want to do. I'm just going to quote now because we, we can quote a little bit more going forward. But, you know, one of our clients said, you know, recently said, you know, said to us, I'm, I'm grateful for you and your staff for helping us retire right which is a little play in our books. We're uh -huh. not very <laughs> concerned about the financial markets on a day-to-day -day basis because you have you have our back and that allows us to focus on family, friends, and fun. And when I got that, I j just said chills through my yeah. th throughout me because that's it. They, they, that's what we do. We allow them to focus on family, friends, and, and fun and not worry about the financial markets on a day-to-day -day basis. So that that's what we do. You know, we also have we're, we're constantly communicating through these podcasts, through our newsletters, through mm -hmm. emails and keeping you abreast, phone calls and of course, of course, meetings. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things I mean, I, I want to go back to the, the fact that you have clients that have been with you for three generations or you're working with three generations of that family. And the reason is, is because this is something if, if you're new to the podcast, you need to understand that Larry has said multiple times that his firm and, and the way he works with clients is that he really wants to have a strong relationship with them. And I love that about you because of the fact that those reviews and getting updates from your clients, it's not pulling teeth. It's just you having a conversation and finding out, oh, somebody's getting married. Oh, congratulations. That's great. And all of a sudden they're going to realize they need to shift some money around because they're going to help pay for a wedding. Or maybe they've got a grandchild on the way. Or, you know, my, my son is, is out of work because of COVID and we're going to help him out a little bit. Larry, what do we need to do with this? That continual communication that you do, being in your clients' lives uh, with a relationship, not just as a, you know, you're the advisor and this is what you do on a schedule, blah, blah, blah. 
you're there with them, walking with them through all those life's ups and downs. And uh, I love that. So that that's fantastic. If somebody wants to call you and, and kind of start this process and, and see the proof is in the pudding from what you said on this podcast, how do they get a hold of you? Absolutely, Eric. So they can go to the, our, our website, hellowealthmanagement.com, and they can actually schedule a, a free consultation with me right there on my calendar, or they can call the office at 631-293-2806 to schedule a telephone call. Fantastic. Happy 80th podcast, Larry. Thank you. We're closing in on a hundred, Eric. That's right. So not not too far not too far down the road. So that'll be that'll be pretty cool. But eighty is pretty good of a milestone. Never thought I would get get here. Actually, well, we're gonna hit a hundred together, and I'm we're gonna. You'll probably hear a cork pop or something on the podcast, right? I'm sure we can do something like that with some champagne or something to celebrate. Uh, Larry, again, thank you so much for your time today. Great, great content for this podcast. All right, great. Thanks, thanks, Eric, so much. You bet. And the last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Retire Right Podcast with Larry Heller. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Larry comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Heller Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time.